Hello friends, it is me yet again. So on this particular episode, we'll feature a crude recreation of Bruce De Palma's end machine. And uh, yeah, basically what this is, is just a big um, magnet. And uh, it's connected to an electric motor. And we've got um, a connection on the outer uh, rim of the magnet. And then we have a another connection on the axis. Uh, hopefully you can see that. And on the rim we have like a ring of copper, bare copper wire, connected to four wires, which all uh, connect together. And they are connected to a voltmeter and an amp meter. So I'll just turn the amp meter on, change it over to DC, and uh, there's a way to fix that. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it on. And the thing is that it's kind of finicky. So it may get stuck at about 500 RPM or it may uh, go up past 2000 RPM. And I can't, it's hard to control. So you just, you'll have to bear with me. I'm powering it with a power supply where kind of an old school analog power supply with a DC voltage and amperage readout. So yeah. Here we go. And I can test the RPM with a tachometer. Okay, we're at about 500 RPM. Speeding up, getting to about 800. Nine hundred, a thousand. Okay, so voltage, we have a small amount of voltage coming in. Amperage. Yeah, I don't want to let it go too fast because I'm kind of afraid it's gonna like explode or something like that. <laughs> I'm gonna turn off, get another reading here, 0 0.7, 0 0.1. Wow, yeah, see it starts, I'm afraid it's gonna pop out of that loop. 0 0.3, 0 0.03, I mean, 0 0.04. Yeah, that gets kind of scary. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I didn't record the RPM, but trust me, it gets over uh, 2,000 RPM. Like, uh, maybe at about uh, 2,500 RPM. And then as it gets faster, um, the elastics expand out and they pull the magnet up. And uh, it pulls it up so far that it's going to probably pop out of that copper ring um, yeah so what I should have done actually is probably taped um, the plastic or I mean the elastics together to kind of prevent them from expanding and pulling up the magnet but yeah uh, I'll do that in another video once I get all the bugs worked out so as you saw it got up to 0 0.07 volts so a small amount of voltage is created and then the um, the amp meter, uh, I don't know. It didn't. It seemed to. Uh, well, as you can see, it's sort of bobbing around. So I'm not really. It didn't really prove anything. Like I proved that I could create a small amount of voltage. And uh, as for amperage. 
um, I don't know if I produced any amperage at all. So, uh, yeah, let me just put my camera on my stand because my hands are kind of shaking because uh, that thing like almost the magnet almost popped out. Oh, that's just my amp meter beeping. That um, if you leave it on too long, it'll turn off and start beeping. So yeah. So uh, you know, I proved that a small amount of voltage can be made. And uh, as for amperage, um, I don't know. It seemed like uh, either a very tiny amount of amperage was created or none at all. And so. You know, the claims from Bruce De Palma is that um, this kind of motor, a uh, sort of the reverse of a homopolar motor, um, the claims are that it produces a tiny amount of voltage, but it also creates a huge amount of amperage. And if you, um, you know, times the two and get the wattage, it will produce more wattage than it consumes. So, you know, I was pumping in at about uh, two volts and two amps into the electric motor. So four watts was going in and at what was coming out was obviously a lot uh, less than that. So, I mean, I know that my, um, my little uh, prototype is pretty crude here. Uh, it's nothing compared to the massive systems that Bruce De Palma created with his end machine. But the point is that I haven't been able to prove what he, um, claimed and uh you know he's not the only one there's other um free energy inventors who are claiming a similar thing uh timothy thrap or trap or however you say his name uh, he also claimed that he built um a very similar motor like an end machine type motor just a spinning magnet with one with you know a terminal on the um the outer edge of the disc and one on the axis and you supposedly can get um you know, low voltage but high amperage, and if you get the wattage, it, it can be it will be more than what you're putting into the system. So he's claiming that, and he Timothy Thra uh, Thrapp also claims that um, Michael Faraday actually discovered this uh, around the just after the year 1800, and that Faraday himself was able to create a free energy device at that time. Uh, you know, over 200 years ago. So. The purpose of this video, um, like I'm not debunking what the claims are, what I'm actually trying to do is just understand how to get it to work. <laughs> so you know, if anyone has created um, a working system, I want to know what the secret is. And there's some particularities that I haven't quite, um, that I don't fully understand because uh, with De Palma, um, his, one of his smallest uh, inventions or devices he used 12 brushes on the outer um, circumference of the magnet. And in, in his largest um, version of the, of the design, uh, he used liquid mercury for the contacts. So there has to be a reason for that. Like why not just use one wire, you know, one on the outer um, edge of the magnet and then one on the axis. Like, you know, why did he want to use 12 brushes and then switch to liquid mercury, which would mean a completely consistent, um, fully full contact on the full um, outer edge of the magnet. So, you know, the, I think the amperage, um, you need more, you need to be in, in more contact with that, um, with the uh, outer edge of the magnet. You know, maybe, maybe it has something to do with the block wall of the magnetic field. You know, that's where the energy shoots out along the um, ecliptic, sort of like the, ga the ga galactic uh, plane. It's the same thing with a magnet, you know, where there's energy that's constantly shooting outward, whereas on the axis, the energy uh, flows inward and then it shoots out along that plane. So to collect that um, excess energy along the, the plane, the ecliptic, uh, I guess you need more collection points along that um, ecliptic plane uh, or elliptical um, circumferential magnetic. Well, you know what I mean. Uh, so. You know, that's one of my theories, but I know that others have created this device, supposedly a work, working devices, but they haven't um, 
they haven't filmed it or, uh, you know, are not, um, you know, are not posting their devices for obvious reasons because, you know, all of these things are being actively suppressed. And yeah, and if you don't realize that, you're, uh, you're in the dark on what's really happening. And unfortunately, 99% of people are in that category. And so, you know, I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of comments about, uh, you know, the usual comments that I'm crazy and blah, 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 and there is no conspiracy, but uh, there is actually a massive conspiracy happening right now in so many ways, technologically, uh, you know, intellectually, spiritually, uh, you know, I could go on, but if I say too much, I will be banned. My video uh, will be deleted and um, my channel will be um, censored and taken down. So uh, just to let everyone know, uh, I'm gonna switch to probably uh, Brighteon because I have a lot to say that I can't say on YouTube anymore because they're gonna uh, get rid of me, you know, if I say too much because, you know, everything's getting more and more controlled and so, um, yeah, so I'll post my Brighteon um, page at the bottom of this video. And uh, I only have an old video um, of my Otis car device on Brighteon right now, but I have uh, a couple other videos that I'm going to post on there uh, for fairly soon. Mostly just commentaries, not uh, nothing of my devices or anything. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if uh, if anyone has any pointers on how I can get the amperage to increase, that would be great. Or if they see anything wrong uh, that I'm doing, uh, feel free to point it out. Um, I am gonna develop this device more to get it a little bit more stable, you know, so that the magnet won't like start bouncing around and pop out of the copper uh, ring and you know explode in my face or something like that so <laughs> and I know that somebody uh, quite a long time ago said that they said that I should measure the weight of this spinning magnet because there's been experiments uh, where the faster you spin a disc the more weight it'll lose because I think they um, one of these black projects spun some kind of like disc and they found that once they got it up to 90,000 RPM, it lost, uh, you know, 3% of its weight or something like that. And this, this ties into, you know, the, the TR-3B, which uses a hollow um, ring filled with like a liquid mercury type substance or a liquid or a, a mercury gas, which they spin up to 3,000 or 30,000 RPM and then it loses supposedly 90% of its weight. And, uh, you know, the Otis car thing had counter rotating aspects that rotated uh, upwards of 70,000 RPM, at which point uh, the system becomes uh, separated from the gravity field of the Earth. It creates its own, um, you know, independent uh, gravitational bubble or something like that. You know, that, that's according to, I think, Ralph Ring said something like that. So really, you know, spinning objects uh, have an ability to distort and alter the gravitational field or the particles of the gravity field. Even a simple gyroscope, you know, you can see that it's it's doing weird stuff already. And, uh, you know, Bruce De Palma experimented with gyroscopes uh, before he created his uh, free energy end machine. And also, um, Adam Trombley created a similar device with a rotating um, electromagnet, I believe, which uh, he was able to get more energy out than in. He created a movie called Thrive, and I used to talk with one of his colleagues back about 20 years ago. And uh, basically, the Department of Defense shut him down uh, and took all of his equipment, uh, millions of dollars, like something like $24 million worth of equipment and gave him a gag order to never to talk about it again. And also his colleague. So they were effectively shut down and they're not the only ones like the, the amount of suppression is just, um, it's insane. 
and uh, you know that will be changing um, in the not too distant future but for the next year or so I mean it's gonna get even worse like the amount of censorship is gonna increase and uh, you know basically the Illuminati are gonna throw everything they can at uh, the world to try to maintain um, control over it but they're gonna fail eventually and uh, I would say a lot more but I can't because uh, I know where the line is uh, because I've seen how many, how others have gotten to that line and then once they pass it their channel disappears so I have to be careful and tread lightly and uh, I can't say too much because uh, they will shut me down <laughs> so I'm switching to Brighteon uh, stay tuned, I'm going to have a couple videos, uh, just commentaries mostly because I have a lot of views on things which I cannot um, talk about uh, because, you know, the evil, um, the dark consortium uh, will take me out. So yeah, uh, that is all for now. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys and girls next time.